add connections is you can invite them if you have their name and email. So as Ruben was saying, if you've met people at networking sessions, uh, you can go in and you can invite them through this method, put their name, first name, last name, and email. Um, you can also import contacts. I have not, I've used that through Gmail, but I haven't done anything else with that. Um, if you click on colleagues, it'll show up your uh, work history that you've put in, and you can check people that are at those uh, jobs that have listed that they've worked at those companies as well, or else classmates. And then one more thing, a quick thing I forgot to show you. On here, before it was really tough to remove connections, but now you can easily, well, not easily add, but you can add connections, but you can very easily remove them as well. So let's say a contact turns out to be not that great, and you just you don't want them to be affiliated within your network. You can quickly work with this person over the yeah, or if it's personal, I, I can't talk from that experience. <laughs> okay, so finding connections. So you can do a LinkedIn search. You can search names if you have someone in particular that you're looking for. Um, people within a company, location, or you can do the keywords. So that's why it's very important to put the keywords in your professional headline on your profile. You can browse other connections. So Larry and I are connected. So I can go and see who's Larry, who's, who else is Larry connected to, and I can see all of his connections. And I can, you know, if I see some familiar names or if I see people I'd like to connect with, I can add those people to my network. I can either get introduced by Larry or I can say, hey, I saw that you're a friend of Larry. Would like to discuss some things with you more. You know, so there's ways that you can add connections based on your connections. And you can invite contacts from 